an employee of Trends, and we're working with uh, Talpharmaco. Javinostat is currently in development for the treatment of Duchenne, and it is not approved for sale in any country, US or Canada at this point, and this uh, presentation is intended for dissemination and discussion of scientific information only. So the latest updates regarding the study are, is that enrollment is still open. There were about halfway with over 125 patients that have been randomized. The, and the goal of the study will, to ha will have 242 patients. The, there's been a recent amendment to the project, um, and so you can see here what we've shown is what was in the previous protocol and what's now in the current updates. Uh, so we think some of them may help improve some of the uh, challenges that have, uh, the program has faced with regards to recruitment. Uh, so they have uh, changed some of the criteria that are specific to the MRI specifically, as well as some of the functional tests. Um, and there's also some changes with regards to the MRI data, as well as putting a lower limit to being able to get up from the floor for uh, the criteria function. So we did want to let everybody know that that new protocol has been approved and that the open label extension, which will allow the participants to continue receiving open label access to Divinistat is now approved uh, in several, several sites in North America. So who can actually be in the study in terms of the key inclusion criteria? Our participants must be able to walk. There's no specific criteria on a particular distance or speed. Uh, they just need to be able to ambulate. There are uh, specific criteria for being able to consistently reproduce uh, the stair test, as well as getting up from the floor. Participants need to be six years or older. Uh, they must have a genetic confirmation of Duchenne. It's not a specific mutation target, but we need to confirm they have Duchenne. And uh, they need to also be on a stable dose of steroids. So you'll, you've heard other speakers say that it's likely to have some sort of combination therapy. Uh, so here, this is additive to steroids, and they, uh, patients also need to be able to tolerate the MRI since it's part of uh, the assessments for screening and something they're looking at uh, to see the efficacy of their intervention. The key exclusion, these, many of these are common across multiple programs. We're trying to avoid anybody who's been taking other investigational drugs that could interfere with really how this particular one functions. Uh, not being on any other drugs that are being taken to be modifying the muscle function, <laughs> having a progression of those ankle contractures, because again, it goes back to the function of the ability to walk. Um, we want to avoid any patients that have a known surgery, because that could, again, impact some of the outcomes. And there's screening tests that are done to rule out anybody that may have certain health conditions that you may be unaware of that could be unsafe to be in the project. This is a diagram showing you uh, what are the different stages uh, of the actual study. These are common to many other programs where there's going to be a screening portion uh, that usually spreads over a few weeks because you have to do certain tests, wait for those results. You sometimes have to reproduce that you can do certain tests in a consistent fashion. In this case, there's also the MRI. We have to wait to get those results to make sure those criteria fit within their eligibility. Participants are then uh, randomized to either receiving Javinostat as well or placebo, and there will be a project lasts for 72 weeks. At the beginning, there's more frequent visits, again, for safety purposes, so we can monitor. And then as participants have been in the trial for uh, at least three months, then the visits are stretched out to be every three months, and then there's an opportunity to being able to receive uh, open label Javinostat through the open label extension. So as I've introduced in the uh, Clinical Trials 101, first step is that informed consent where you can ask all the questions, review really what's involved. The informed consent is something that is a process that lasts throughout the entire project and is really a good reference to go back to to see really what to expect at each visit. It helps that anticipation guidance to your voice to remind them this visit is the one where you're going to do these particular assessments. There's a, a total of 15 visits. Again, as I've stated in the previous diagram, there's going to be more frequent visits at the beginning to again monitor for any type of side effects. 
there's also some surveys and diaries. There's muscle tests that are being done by the physios uh, to look at the six minute walk test, the North Star ambulatory assessment, as well as the time to climb four stairs, as well as some quantitative muscle testing. Pulmonary is done as well to look at the function uh, of the lungs. And then we've mentioned the MRI, which is trying to see uh, the proportion of changes in fat uh, fraction uh, from the MRI. Javinostat is a liquid oral suspension that's taken twice a day with food. This is a map of North America. We have uh, three participating sites in Canada, and uh, Dr. Ma is one of the participating centers here in uh, Calgary. Uh, Ital Farmaco has really listened to the families, and this is again why it's so important to come here and talk to you directly to hear what kind of additional changes may be needed in the program to help support families. Uh, they've focused on being able to provide some alternatives for those early visits to have home nursing so that uh, there's less burden for those earlier visits to be able to do the blood draws. Uh, they've made arrangements to be able to support travel um, to all the participants and then uh, the open label extension to ensure that once the trial is completed, people still gain access until it gets uh, approved by the different regulatory bodies. So just a, a quick overview of what that open label looks like. Um, so this is where uh, participants will uh, continue to then get the oral liquid suspension of Javinostat. And the primary objectives are to see more long-term effects uh, of the intervention on fun function and strength, respiratory, as well as daily activities and quality of life with the surveys. And so again, uh, there'll be more frequent visits at the beginning. For those that may have been on the placebo, we want to really make sure it's safe. And then the visits will then stretch to be every four months until it gets uh, the necessary approvals from the regulators. So a little bit about what Javinostat is. Um, it is a histone deacetylase inhibitor, and I'll tell you a little bit more about what that really means. As I've said, that's an, uh, it's administered as an oral suspension, and to date there's been a number of patients that have received Javinostat, some with juvenile arthritis, as well as uh, over 70 patients with Duchenne uh, have been taking uh, the Javinostat for over five years, and I'll show a little bit of what that preliminary data looks like. So we tried to break this down in a more cartoon uh, fashion, and so it was great to have the earlier speaker talking about uh, what happens with muscle uh, breakdown and muscle repair. And so this is really looking at what our muscles do uh, and when they try to repair themselves. So we have our cells that are waiting in this kind of off position. We have these inhibitors that turn off that off switch, and then these special cells are what helps the body make the new cells for the muscle. And so when uh, we have Duchenne, we have some inefficiencies with some of the way those inhibitors turn off and on. And so our, those cells are waiting in that off position until that particular damage happens. And we know that with Duchenne, and you heard from the earlier speaker, that that damage is happening uh, more frequently than in patients that don't have Duchenne because of the dystrophin, uh, lacking of dystrophin protein in our muscles. And so the signal doesn't work properly. And so then we have our uh, cells uh, turn in to make more fat cells, which is what we see with that scar tissue, which is the fibrosis. And so that's really where the rationale of doing the MRI is to look to see how much of that muscle has been kind of t converted to scar tissue or what we call fibrosis. And so what we think the mechanism of action is for Javinostat is actually interfering with that inhibitor and helping the damage trigger turn off that particular off signal so that it can inhibit it and help repair more frequently um, and start those repairs and, and trigger the cells to function with that repair. This is a little bit about the data to date on the patients that have been receiving Javinostat. So there's been a number of studies that have moved into some extensions and, and follow-ups. So the original study was a dose finding, which is often how those start. If you think back to that uh, clinical trials 101, we started with some early phases where we have just dose finding, where we tend to compare different doses to see which one we want to move into larger groups of patients. And so there were 20 patients that enrolled in 2013. Of those, uh, 18 completed uh, over 52 months of receiving Javinostat. Uh, that is the follow-up 
portion, and then it moved into a longer term extension of 36 months. Um, and then again, it continued to extend into an even longer extension. And so that's where, again, there's been participants uh, taking gymnostat now for over five years. And of those original 20 patients, 16 still remain on uh, gymnostat. This is looking at some of that data from those uh, early MRIs and those uh, first 20 participants. And you can see here the muscle fibro area has increased, which is what we're looking for. We see a decrease in the total amount of scar tissue um, and the fibrosis, and we see less of that fat replacement, which is, uh, again, encouraging to see these results. This is comparing to patients uh, in natural history studies. So uh, Dr. Ma had mentioned the Synergy study, and I've mentioned uh, some of the contributions our network has done. This was a natural history study of patients followed for 10 years. And you can see here, these are uh, on the left, it's the diagram of the patients in the study and looking at the age of ambulation for patients that had taken steroids for less than one month. So again, this is a similar slide that you saw earlier. And we can see with steroids uh, that uh, age of uh, when 50% of the patients reach the point of losing ambulation is around the age of 13.4 uh, years. And then what we've done is uh, perform a similar graph with the patients receiving Javinista, and we see that uh, that age of loss of ambu ambulation is around 15 years. Uh, so, so far, again, the results have been encouraging, which is why we continue to study this now in the phase three. This is looking at similar slides now for the function of the lungs. So the FVC is the function uh, for our uh, looking at the prediction, and so again, we see uh, compared to patients in the natural history study that there has been a reduction in the disease progression when it comes to those pulmonary function tests. In terms of safety, it has been well tolerated, um, and the most frequent adverse events that have been seen are related to the platelet count, so it's something that you'd see from the blood test, which is why in the beginning part of the trial there's more of them so that we can adjust the dose in case we do see some of those changes in the platelet counts. Um, so it has been dose dependent and overall has been asymptomatic and fully reversible when the dose has been modified. There's been also uh, the most other uh, adverse events have been some nausea, vomiting, and abdominal pain uh, that has been reported as mild to moderate and transient. And again, that's where you work with your study doctor to uh, make any adjustments. And so with that, we wanted to thank all of the organizations that have helped uh, Atal Pharmaco fund uh, their research and continue on now for a number of years. So I think we'll discuss any questions with the panel.